Welcome to the second episode of the ZEP OS introductory video series. Next, you will join me in developing a simple SOS app to experience the convenience and fun of ZEP OS development. The default developer in this tutorial has registered a personal account and completed the installation of development tools such as ZEP CLI and ZEP OS Emulator. For more installation details, please watch the first episode of the ZEP OS introductory video series. Before formally developing an application, we first need to clarify what application we want to develop. What are the basic features or requirements? Will device sensors be used? Is the sensor that may be used officially supported? Check the official doc with a series of questions to see if the provided API meets the development needs. You might think about it if you were asked to develop an SOS app. How would you achieve it? We first need to understand the SOS signal rules, three short, three long, three short. That is, the lights flash three short lights, three long lights, and three short lights in sequence. So the key to development is to control the flickering of the screen. If we can find the ZEPOS to control the flickering of the screen on the API dock, the most critical part can be solved easily. It may be difficult for you to conceive directly. If you were asked to develop according to the needs listed in the picture, would you be able to meet them? When we enter the ZEPOS doc platform, we can see that the application page lists different types of APIs. There are three categories, device application API, setting application API, and companion service API. You can roughly guess their main scope of use from the name. The device application runs on the watch, so the device application API provides APIs related to small applications on the watch side, with various capabilities such as UI, system operations, and sensor calls. The setup application runs on the ZEP app, so the setup application API provides APIs related to the ZEP app side of the mobile phone, with the ability of UI interaction. The companion service runs in the ZEP app and has no UI interface, so the companion service API has the ability to call part of the ZEP app, such as persistent storage, and can communicate with the device application and the watch side. Take the SOS small application we are going to do today as an example. The key point is how to send out a striking distress signal on the watch, which can attract the attention of others through the change of the screen. Check the official API doc, you will find that the system module of device application API provides APIs related to screen flashing. We may wish to verify whether it is practical to use. Every time a new application is developed, the developer must apply for a dedicated app ID. We need to log into ZEP Health Open Platform, click Admin Center, click Create App in Application Service, My Application, and fill out the name and type of the app you want to develop. After the application is successful, the system will assign you a dedicated app ID. Remember to apply for an app ID on the system before each development. Open the terminal and enter the above command Zeus create plus SOS to create the project file. Select the template you want to create, empty template and hello world template. Here we choose empty template. Since our SOS applet does not involve complex communication interactions, we do not have to choose to set up the application and accompanying services. Then we need to choose which device the application is running on according to the prompts. You may move up and down to select devices you want to run on. Press A to represent all choices. Press Enter to create our project successfully. Then find the project file just created on the machine and open it with VS Code. Now, we can start developing. Enter the virtual machine and open the simulator. If there are two interfaces on the screen, it means that the simulator has opened successfully. But the problem is that we are developing on our native machine, but the simulator is installed on the Linux virtual machine. So, how do we preview the app across our systems? 
First, open the terminal on our virtual machine environment, enter the command ifconfig, and copy the internet protocol address of the virtual machine. Then, go back to your native desktop and open the terminal. Enter the command Zeus config set simulator underscore host equals your IP. At this time you will find that the terminal shows that the simulator connection is successful. As we write new code, we can immediately trigger the simulator on Linux. Open the file we just created and find app.json. Its main function is to configure the mini program globally. Here are some important things to know when developing. App ID, the app ID we just applied for must be filled in. Vendor, you can fill in your own name or nickname. It is particularly emphasized that the path in pages and targets corresponds to the page directory in the project file. Whenever a file is added to the page file, it must also be added to the app JSON targets pages as the corresponding directory. Handwritten code. Before we start, we must remind ourselves that our plan is to develop the SOS applet through the API provided by the official control screen. What are the parameter types of these APIs, and how do we use them? We mentioned just now that the API we need can be found in the device applications FOS, from setting system module, of the API doc platform. We can preview it first. Hmm setting dot set screen auto bright sets whether to turn on the brightness of the automatic screen. A return value of zero indicates that the setting was successful. Hmm setting dot get screen auto bright returns whether the current device has automatic brightness turned on. Hmm setting dot set brightness set the screen brightness of the current device in the range 0, 100. A return value of 0 indicates that the setting was successful. Hmm setting dot get brightness returns the screen brightness of the current device. Returns the screen brightness of the current device range 0, 100. Hmm setting dot set bright screen set the bright screen time. When the screen needs to be always on, you can set a larger bright screen time. The return value of zero indicates that the setting was successful. Hmm setting dot set bright screen cancel, cancel the bright screen time. The return value of zero indicates that the setting was successful. Hmm setting dot set screen off, call set screen off to stop the screen. The return value of zero indicates that the setting was successful. Each API corresponds to a description, type, parameters, and code examples. You can read it carefully during development, and we will explain it later in subsequent development. Enter the project file we just created and find the page directory, where the logic of our page is written. Next, we will develop in the index file. Remember our desired features. SOS signals are to be implemented by flashes on the screen. SOS applications should comply with the SOS signal rules, three short, three long, three short flashes. So we need to control the flashing time of the screen. According to our requirements just mentioned, we can define an array that stores a string of numbers, representing the duration of the screen flashing, positive numbers are bright, negative numbers are off. As required, we want the application to start entering dark tones, so we need to implement this function at initialization time. Here we need to introduce the life cycle of our device application. Find the guide page in the doc platform. Click on the device application in the framework introduction, and we will find that there is a life cycle, we can go in and see what is written in it. Here is a schematic diagram of the life cycle of the application, and you can see that each page contains three steps, initialize, build, and destroy. What each section represents is also listed at the bottom. So our application needs to implement the dark color tone when entering the application under the oninit function. Remember the API we were looking for? 
Find them on the documentation, whom setting dot get brightness returns the screen brightness of the current device. Now we can create the API. Define a global variable, brightness equals zero, it represents the brightness of the screen, and assign the return result to it. We want the screen to be brightly adjusted according to our control, so we need to cancel the automatic screen brightness. Hmm setting dot get screen auto bright returns whether the current device has automatic brightness turned on. We use that API and define a global variable auto bright equals false that represents whether automatic brightness is turned on and assign the return result to it. Build represents the state of the application while it is running. We can set the application to start flashing after one second. But how do we alternate flashes? We haven't written this logic yet, so we need to write a function specifically to do the operation. We'll call this function light. It passes in two parameters, millsec for the flash time, which is milliseconds and flag for the flag, indicating whether the function executes. Next define a variable, duration ms, which represents the interval time of screen brightness. Here we can make a condition. If the light function passes the value of the variable mil sec, then assign this value to the variable duration ms, otherwise, assign the value in the light underscore time underscore list array to duration ms. In order to get the value in the array, here we need to define another variable representing the index. How do we set the screen on and off? We can indicate that the screen is off by inserting a widget to fill the background. Of course, in this case, our widget requires a timer to know when to switch on and off for the SOS flashes. So, we create a timer. We can see a timer module in the device application API page. After viewing it, we can see that it lists how to create and stop timers for us. Create timer, delay, repeat, callback, option, has three parameters. The first parameter, delay, represents the timer delay start time. The repeat parameter represents the interval cycles of the timer, callback represents the callback function. Since our array has positive and negative values, we need to get the absolute values as the parameters. The timer's repeat time can be set to anything of your liking. For example, 5. Next, we will write the callback function in the timer. When the timer is created, we do not want it to be on all the time, otherwise it will repeat before the widget is created. So the first statement of the callback function should stop the timer. Then we make a condition. When the light function is called, a widget fill underscore act is created, and the color is set to white. This API can be found in the control module. The fill rectangle widget is used to draw a solid color rectangular area. The above example is done for us. We can write the code according to the official documentation. Some people may be confused about how the length and width of the widget should be written. Here, we can obtain the length and width of the device. So in the development doc we can find the home setting .get device info API, which gets the width and height of the device. So we can write it at the top.
Note that 0 XFFFFF here stands for white. The screen needs to be on all the time after the app starts. So we need to set time that the screen is on FPR. This time can be set longer. For example, 60 by 60. Then add 1 to the index to move to the next value in the array. We also make a condition. When the index value is greater than the length of the array, set it to 0 and start the loop again. When the value in the array is positive, the background is white. When it's negative, the background is black. Don't forget to add the variable in the previous light function, because we start after 1 second, so fill in 1000. OnDestroy represents the logic after destruction. All we have to do here is to restore the automatic brightness of the screen, stop the timer, and stop the flash intervals. Then you can debug the application you wrote. Execute the Zeus dev command at the end point of the project to preview the emulator. At this time, open the emulator and you can preview the SOS applet you made. We started by previewing whether the app we wrote met expectations, and we found that the screen didn't flash as expected. Let's see where the code is not perfect. We looked at the code and found that the syntax of the widget properties is wrong. Changing widget properties should require the syntax in the above example. Then we found that we did not define the index variable and the fill rect variable globally, so we need to define these two variables globally and see if it is correct. At this time, I returned to the simulator interface and found that it had flashed as expected. Then our target requirements are developed and we can continue to add more features in the future. Thank you for watching the second episode of the ZepOS Developer Introductory Video Series. If you have any questions, feel free to leave a comment down below.